Warning, all material used in this video is utilized for the purposes of comment and criticism and is protected under section 17 of the USC 106 and 17 USC 106A of the United States Copyright Code. Any copyright claim made against this video will result in legal action. Wow, so my video on raw food created quite a stir. Here's just a few comments that I received on my video. What a joke! This sad excuse for a man is one of two things. One, a mainstream medical industry shill. Or two, someone who is too weak to change trying to validate his weakness by claiming it's because of research. Frankly, I grow weary of all these born followers that take studies with the profit motive behind them at face value. The greedy, murdering corporations that fund these studies would never lie. Ever. Acquire discipline and become a real man. Next. Another loser, hater, who failed to transition to a raw dietary lifestyle and then makes a video about what's wrong with living raw. Truly unimpressive. And everyone here who wasted their slash our time commenting about your sad little video is laughing at you. The, the, truly great news is you used up the quota and privilege to be stupid. You, sir, are an ass. Keep eating your McDonald's and Burger King. Take your prescription medication for the rest of your life. And then my personal favorite... A gay nigger should be able to relate. Did you notice a common theme here? Not one of these comments contain any actual refutations to the points I made, only insults. If you go through the comments, I doubt you'll see any real research, just anecdotal evidence on why a raw food diet worked for them, along with more insults. Adlia is 41 years old and claims to hold powers of exorcism, pyrokinesis, and the ability to manipulate objects, all of which he says were passed down to him by his father. Visitors from all over come to his apartment in Giza on a daily basis to see him in action as he heals through the Quran. He has developed quite the reputation in the Egyptian press. Omar Muhammad is one of Atiyah's clients. Believing that she has been possessed for 12 years, she decided to consult with Atiyah. Just begging and nagging and keeping on, please God, take this away, please heal my husband. And I felt like his little child and that he was carrying me. Eventually, Andy's cancerous kidney was also removed. And for two years, he lived with no sign of cancer. Then in 2005, he received devastating news. They had said there were two nodules close to Andy's heart that they could not biopsy because of the danger of puncturing the heart or the lungs. And then the other one was on the other kidney. My God, how, how much can it keep going on? You know, please God, please God, please God, you know, remove this, remove this cancer. You know, I rebuke this cancer. We just continued to pray and he said we'll do a CAT scan instead of waiting two months we'll do it in about five weeks yeah. and you know when they did the CAT scan they were all gone all three nodules gone totally clear and they remain clear now and ah oh, that is just the, that was the greatest I, I just thank you Jesus you know without surgery without chemotherapy God did it what man couldn't do, God did. Today, Andy has a clean bill of health with no sign of cancer. Andy's back to one of his favorite pastimes, playing basketball with his two boys. He also loves talking about the miracle God gave him and his family. So, you just watched a plethora of videos of people offering anecdotal evidence on how they were miraculously healed through God or Allah, as well as raw food. So then, if anecdotal evidence is enough to convince you, why don't you guys all become Christians or Muslims as well as raw foodists?
One thing we must take into account in miraculous healing is the placebo effect. What this is in a nutshell is basically when someone feels like something will help them, it relieves the stress and they do begin to get better. But let's look into some other reasons why people going on a raw food diet may actually feel better. One, the raw diet is relatively high in unsaturated fats, the good fats, compared to saturated fats, the bad fats, and generally eliminates all trans fats, the really bad fats. Number two, a raw food diet is mostly made up of fruits and vegetables, therefore eating this way fills your body with phytochemicals, antioxidants, fiber, and other vitamins and minerals which promote good health. Three, people on a raw food diet generally eliminate all processed foods and associated refined products such as refined sugar, which are known to be harmful to our bodies. Four, they also tend to eliminate potential problem foods. For example, since raw food is often equated with vegan, many people give up dairy and so benefit if they had a dairy intolerance. Since grain is eliminated, anyone with a gluten or other grain related intolerance benefits. Number five, since 100% raw is so very difficult to maintain in our culture, it needs a lot of focus and dedication. People who focus and dedicate themselves to this aspect of their health usually also make an effort at the same time to sleep well, exercise well, involve themselves in relaxation exercises like meditation and yoga. All these can contribute to the feeling of well-being. I know many people in my audience were saying, well now, sounds like you just disproved your own point and that going on a raw food diet is the best thing for you. But wait, you can gain all of these benefits without going to the extreme of a 100% raw food diet. For years, medical professionals have preached a diet that is high in fruits and vegetables and low in refined sugars and saturated fats. Remember the food pyramid from school? This is nothing new. Furthermore, as stated in the first video, the link between obesity and lack of proper nutrition with various diseases is already well known and documented. It is not necessary to go to the other extreme and eat only raw foods. In fact, going on a raw food only diet can have many negative impacts such as Another problem that many raw food advocates fail to mention is the cost. A raw food diet can be pricey. Organic ingredients tend to cost more than other types and not every grocery store carries a wide array of raw and organic products. Plus, you'll need to buy new appliances. High-end blenders range from $300 to $600, for example and food processors capable of slicing, grating, and shredding can go for $700. Dehydrators cost about $100 to $200. And just to offer some more anecdotal evidence, here's some testimonials from people who have discontinued their 100% raw food diets. To explain why I no longer eat that way, and the main reasons are because my body was just giving me signals that what I was doing was not right for it. And some of those signals were breakouts, skin breakouts, um, you know, more than normal, not just the occasional bump here and there. It was like my skin was telling me, like, I'm, I don't like something that you're doing. My skin was breaking out a lot more than normal. Um, I had like abdominal weight gain, which that's not my body type at all. Like if I were to gain weight, it would be more in like my thighs and my hips. So that was really strange to me. Um, I also stopped having my menstrual cycle and that went on for months. It wasn't just like one month I didn't have it. And I know a lot of people that do follow the raw vegan diet think that that's natural and that's normal to not have a menstrual cycle. 
that just never felt normal or natural to me and like I said I did give it some time and it was it was quite a few months that I did not have the menstrual cycle and that was scary to me as a woman who wants to have kids someday another thing was that when I got my blood work done my triglyceride levels were elevated I've never had a problem with that and this is when I was eating probably 10% or, or less of fat in my diet. A lot of times it was a lot less. It was more around 5% fat in my diet. So these were very alarming things to me that something that I was doing wasn't right and I was quote unquote, you know, eating this perfect diet and I was following it to the T and a lot of people have told me like, you know, well, you probably weren't eating enough calories. You probably weren't sleeping enough. You probably weren't hydrated enough. I was drinking about three liters of water a day, sleeping on average eight to nine hours. And I was also eating probably around 2,000, 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. So I was definitely, I mean, I did it by the book. That's my personality. Like whenever I do something, I just, I go all out and I put my whole heart into it and I definitely did it with that lifestyle. Staying on track doesn't allow it. Raw is not for everybody. I mean, I know it is the best way to do. I mean, after seeing so many videos and listening to so many people talking and people that are raw and things like that, well, of course, it inside of me, uh, the seeds was, were planted. I mean, I wanted to turn raw. I deeply wanted. I tried it. I tried it, but the sin this what i felt it was so severe and it's not about detoxifying i mean lots of people claim on this lots of raw people claim on detoxifying when some people experience um, crazy symptoms in their body but it's not that it was only that my ga gastrointestinal tract doesn't allow it and why i say this because raw food is not easy on digestive tract you have to understand this because it is full of fibers this and also it is very harsh on digestive system. Uh, something like imagine eating broccoli or cauliflower raw. I mean, come on, they are just very tough and <clears throat> they can't be uh, so easily uh, transformed in a paste, in a, um, the texture, the mild texture for the gastrointestinal tract to handle it. So. The main reason why I'm not raw, it is because my gastrointestinal tract is very sensitive. And what means that? means that I have lots of intolerances and I had in the past when I tried to cure myself. I had lots of food intolerances, food allergies and um, something like, let's say I couldn't eat um, spinach, I couldn't eat paprika and um, cauliflower as I said, broccoli and many 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 vegetables. I couldn't eat fruit at all. I had some kind of fructose intolerance. I mean if I eat a piece of apple I instantly got bloated and um, lots of gas from fruits. Okay so I also have I also have been um, how to say, deficient in enzymes and everything in my gastrointestinal tract was was under the roof. I mean, I had inflammation and the fibers in the raw food just made the inflammation worse because it's scratching the walls, as I said, and caused even more inflammation. So this is the main reason why I was not raw, because I couldn't be raw. In conclusion, you're going to do what you want to do. I'm not making any money from these videos. I just wanted to put another perspective out there. The fact is, if you choose to listen, great. But if you choose to have closed ears and worst, a closed mind, then that's your decision also. Thank you for your time.